So my first publication wasn't as a medical student, it was as a foundation doctor and I still got my second choice for my foundation application. So it will work out in the end. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new then a massive welcome to you. Here you'll find loads of useful information about medical careers, in particular diversifying your career and general practice. I also provide content for aspiring medics and students, in particular medical students. And you'll also find loads of inspiration and positivity here. going to tell you how you can get published as a medical student. It's very doable and it's not something to be feared or to worry about. So if you want to know just how you can get published and get quite a few publications, keep watching and watch right to the end because I'll be taking you through some of my publications on my LinkedIn profile. By looking at some of my publications, I'm hoping that you'll be able to draw some inspiration from them and get started at least on your first publication. I will also be providing you with key tips from Remarks, which is a platform designed to make the publishing process easier. They remove social barriers to success, encouraging mentorship and making work review fairer and transparent. So go ahead and check out their website where you may be able to find a project. I will leave a link in the description box below for you to click on. They have loads of different research projects for both clinical and non-clinical students. And many of these projects are hosted by numerous researchers with loads of publications. Publications are almost guaranteed in many of the projects, providing the work is completed to a high standard. As always, if you like the content, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos, then make sure you subscribe and don't forget to turn that bell on so you know when I'm going to release my next video. So my first publication wasn't as a medical student, it was as a foundation doctor. So please don't worry if you haven't been published yet. And I still got my second choice for my foundation application and actually it was better than my first choice, but I realised that in retrospect. So it will work out in the end. Okay, so why did I decide to do this video? Well, I've been speaking to quite a few medical students and I've got the impression that you guys are really worried and some of you are even panicking because you haven't been published and you don't know where to start. I posted on LinkedIn about this and offered you guys support and I couldn't believe the uh, response I got to the post with I think a hundred likes and I had a lot of connection requests on the back of it so I really want to help you guys and I thought because there are so many of you who need help I thought it might be really useful if I was just to do a video with a few tips so that you have it as a starting point. So I have a number of publications and the most recent one I have um, was earlier this year in the Oxford Medical Case Reports and this was a publication that I started when I was taking my year out of training. I mean, the point is publications will take some time to build. So I have loads of medical and non-medical publications. I just recently published an ebook for aspiring medics and medical students, which you may want to check out. And I also just published a poetry book because I love writing poetry as well. So before I tell you how to get published, we need to start with the why. I've spoken to many of you to try and help and I often start with why do you want to get published and what interests you and sometimes you guys don't really have the answer. I mean you know roughly what areas you might be interested in but I think we really need to get down to the crux of why publications are important. One of the main reasons is to contribute to the medical literature and to provide information to people around the world which may aid them in helping and treating patients and in developments. Remarks also say that by being published you are developing loads of different skills. It also demonstrates an interest and commitment to a particular specialty. And many of the academic clinicians that Remarks spoke to have said that students should be looking to pursue their passion and interest for the subject. 
therefore adding value to the medical literature, the scientific community and potential patient care. So the how, now I'm going to tell you how to actually get published. Later on in the video, I will take you through my LinkedIn profile and just talk you through some of my publications and how they came about. Before I tell you how, I want you to start small. Again, when I've been speaking to some of you guys, you have wanted to do like these amazing literature reviews and systematic reviews and all these amazing projects, which is great. But it's really important that if you have no prior experience in publishing, you don't have a mentor, then you need to start small and you need to have a very thorough look around. First of all, you need to know what journals you want to publish in, what their guidelines are, because this will help you look around for a suitable project and it will enable you to tailor what your research or your project is to the journal's guidelines. So number one is essay competitions. Many of the Royal Colleges have competitions throughout the year. In addition to the student BMJ, I always recommend the student BMJ and the BMJ in general. We will go through my profile and you will see some of the articles I published in the BMJ. There are subsections in the BMJ and I've always found that the editors have always been really helpful um, in an idea that I've proposed uh, to them. So number two is a letter to the editor. So for instance, you can write a response to an article or a piece of research. Perhaps there was something that should have been included but wasn't. Perhaps you just have a different perspective. And want to share it. Perhaps you've done some research in response to the research that you've seen or the article that you've seen and you want to share that. So all these things I'm talking about are really to just prompt you into creating something new and to get you thinking. The final one is opinion pieces which can be published in the BMJ which I will talk about a little bit later. So there are other ways to get published and that could be through thinking about a quality improvement project. Now, if you have a rotation in general practice, this might be a good place to think about quality improvement projects and of course audits as well. But quality improvement projects are maybe seem to be a little bit easier than audits and they can be very simple projects to just get you started. Now, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time providing you with information from the marks. They talk about SSEs. They say that this gives you the opportunity to carry out a research project under supervision. You can ask your supervisor for advice and guidance on the best approach to get your research published. Now, if you've done an IBSC, this is also a good place to get published. I personally didn't get published. My project was not included in the overall uh, project that was published um, which I was told that it would be but hey these things happen but remarks say there may be an opportunity to carry out a library or a lab based project this experience will be supervised by an expert in that particular field and these are the best people to advise you on how and where to get your research published they also say that to pursue further interests in research it would be a great idea to ask them if they need assistance on other projects from a keen medical student such as yourselves on their current research. This is a great way of further developing a passion you may take further during your clinical years. Now the last thing remarks say is that you should get involved in societies. They also say that you should check out research societies because they may have pre-existing research projects for you to sign up to. Alternatively, you can look for summer research internships, which exist across the UK. So let's look at my LinkedIn profile now. So this is the first publication I'm going to talk you through. This is my most recent publication in the Oxford Medical Case Reports, as you can see. This publication came about because during my year out of training, I found what I thought was an interesting case. However, the consultant I approached to help me with the case report said it's not that interesting, actually, but I've got a case that we're writing up. If you'd like to um, get involved, then how about you write a literature review so I did but I didn't hear anything for a number of years and I had then moved on to my GP training then I was contacted to say that the research was going to be submitted and um, just to let me know so the learning points here are show enthusiasm seek opportunities and be contactable so this is another case report I did during my year out of training 
So I identified a case, I wrote it up, and then um, I contacted the consultant who was looking after the patient, and I submitted the article. The case report was actually rejected the first time, but they gave me pointers, so I resubmitted it. I actually struggled to find somewhere to submit the case report, so I would always suggest have a look around at some journals and look at their guidelines before writing in some cases. So I'm taking you now to the next case report, which is when I was an F1. We had weekly teaching and we had to present a case. So we presented a case and then the registrar at the time suggested that we write it up. So he took the lead on that and that was subsequently published. So I'm now going to take you to an audit, which I was part of, well, a re-audit. There were some trainees who um, sent an email out looking for help. And so I was interested in cardiology at the time and I volunteered. And then uh, I was part of the um, publication and also we presented it to. So this is another audit. I did a grand round and I was paired up with one of the consultants. I was interested in neurology at the time and I said, well, is there anything else you've got going on? She said that she was working on an audit that would be published and if I'd be interested, and so I was. Um, I obviously moved hospitals afterwards, but I recruited some more help and that was in the form of an F1 who then recruited someone else and then it got published. So now I'm taking you to some other articles I've written. I wrote an article for the MPS about uh, my time in the surgical HDU. And now I'm going to take you to an ethical dilemma that I was part of uh, for the uh, MPS, which you can see at the top here. I wrote some articles for the BMJ, mental health among medical students at the bottom. I also wrote about mental health for the support for doctors network. And I wrote another article for the BMJ exploring doctors' mental health. Then I wrote uh, about the future of the NHS for the BMJ. And that was an opinion-based article. Then I wrote about diversity at medical school for BMJ careers. And then I wrote about the importance of creativity as a medic for the BMJ again. So finally, other things to consider would include the impact factor of the journal. If you want to know more about the impact factor, then I've left a link in the description box below for you to have a read. Also think about cost. You may have to pay a certain fee if your article or research gets published. Now you can submit your research to different journals, but at different times. You cannot just submit one piece of research to multiple different journals all at the same time. Submitting to multiple journals could result in issues with copyright, which could impact your publication. So remarks suggest just wait to hear a response from one journal before moving on to another. So just wait to hear if you've been successful before you decide to submit your research to another journal. So remarks say that publications can exist in different formats. So it's important to look into this. Some journals will publish case studies, posters and letters to the editor, whereas others do not. So make sure your research is in the format that the journal will accept. The final thoughts from remarks, they say that publications come in time and I definitely second this. Clinical and academic advice states that producing good quality work that you are interested in and proud of is better than chasing points for your CV. Additionally, clinicians and academics often say that they do not want to supervise students who are only interested in getting their name on a paper. They would want to develop a curious mind that has an interest in their specialty. So those are a few tips from myself and remarks. So make sure you implement them and I'm sure you'll get published. But please don't worry, publications do come in time. It's about building up your skill set and over time you will get the publications that you require. If you found the video useful, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want more content like this in the future, be sure to subscribe and turn that bell on so you don't miss out on any videos.